And um, uh, Shane, I've got a question for you. Um, in February, IAPMO uh, published the first edition of the Green Plumbing and Mechanical Code Supplement. And um, could you tell us uh, how that document fits in with other existing water efficiency programs and, and why, why you feel it's needed? Well, I, I, uh, it'll be interesting to see how the adoption process, if it gets adopted with some of the other uh, supplemental books, you know, for the code book. But um, I, I think it is an important uh, resource and tool for installers and builders and uh, jurisdictions to, uh, to use to do whatever we can to uh, save energy and, uh, and create an environment that, uh, that will save, uh, save water and save uh, electricity and save uh, uh, to use uh, practices that, uh, that, that will provide that efficiency that, we, that we, we need, you know, that will make it easier for, for all of us, you know. It's not, uh, it's not just the, uh, you know, the, the, the home builder here, he, he, he can't come up with a magic bullet, you know. Uh, there is also the uh, behavior, you know, like uh, Doug was saying, you know, people are still going to leave uh, the slip and slide hose running, you know, and they're going to still leave the, 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 the refrigerator door open and they're going to, uh, you know, take, want to take, uh, now that we have instantaneous water heaters, they're going to want to take a half hour shower, you know, so even though we have regulations to try to minimize that and install them properly, uh, there is behavioral issues too, but I think that the, the supplement uh, will be very uh, helpful in, uh, in, in uh, what, us that way. What, what are the trades, uh, um, the affected trades, how, how do you feel that they're, they are in terms of accepting change? Well, I think the biggest issue would be uh, uh, for a lot of the, for the trades is cost, cost and uh, time, you know. Um, in today's, I don't, on uh, my end of town, we don't deal so much with the, with the, with the urban planning as far as uh, new development. Um, there's a lot of custom homes and uh, they have uh, an architect that wants a certain way and they want a lead platinum home. You know, there's one person in the house and it's a 5,000 square foot house, but they have a lawn <laughs> and they have a, a lemon tree because they got so many points for the lemon tree, but nobody's going to eat lemons in the house, you know. <laughs> And uh, how that all factors in, I'm not sure. You know, that's another, you know, the the building council. Everybody's got their own little two cents on how to how to do things, and I can't figure it out how you have one person in a 5,000 square foot house and a platinum lead home. Right. You know? Yeah, a lot of yeah. people are chasing points instead of uh, thinking yeah. thinking things through. You know, yeah. the only person needs lemons is the gardener. You know, who's putting the sprinklers on for half an hour every day or what have you, and defeating the whole purpose of of everything we're talking about you know? it, uh, relative to the green code what I'm excited about that supplement is that it comes from a one of the code bodies so again historically what was happening is that conservation people would go out and they'd say hey we want to require something or another I mean it could have been uh, uh, at one time I know in the city of Las Vegas came up with a code that said that you had to have a hot water recirculating pump and uh, it was done not very effectively. This was prior to me getting there, but this is the story I've been told. It was not done with the code officials. Well, we all know what happens when it ain't in the code, when it's in some other part of law, it doesn't exist to an inspector. It's not in the piece of code that they inspect for. And so what I'm excited about the green supplement is it's, it's very credible. I think it was put together with uh, the right kind of input. I think over time, it's very new, so you're going to find out some things work, some things don't. People object to some things and accept others. Um, but what I like about it is that uh, it's going to be much easier to have it be accepted by code, code professionals than some of the efforts in the past where you'd create some kind of law and it'd be in a different part of the city's municipal code and the code inspectors didn't look for it at all and everybody would get frustrated. Why is nobody inspecting for this? because it's nobody's job to look for it. So this would, I think this is exciting to see this happening. Um, it'd be interesting to watch the communities that pick it up, where they go, what kinds of problems we run into, but I know it's been the case with everything, is that uh, you, know, you, you move on, you learn from your experiences, and you try to move again. So. Well, it'd be interesting, like just in the, the shower enclosures, you know how they, 
you, you had the you had the 2.5 or 2.2, and the, or you, some people go down to 1.0 GPM with their heads, and they but they might have a thing the size of a garage, you know. With, with, <laughs> you, have, you have body sprays and deluge, and you have all these different <laughs> things, and it's like, you know. But but that that now we have a uh, an area that is uh, predetermined of how much you know you get per area, and. Uh, just certain practices like that that I think it, it, it is very helpful you know, for the inspector. Well, I'm going to, uh, Craig, I'm going to let you uh, um, have the final word. And, and uh, I guess my question goes back again, you know, from a, a product standpoint, but, but I know that um, Masco and its brands are more involved than just, you know, looking at this from a product standpoint. Where would you like to see us get? in the next five years and and what do you see as the hurdles <laughs> well um well it's like i said before though i, I think that the hurdle is uh, making sure that we're providing products that work for the people that are using them um, and gathering information from them trying some things seeing what kind of feedback we get um you know may lead us to some some new innovations uh, so new insights. I mean, we're doing some home water use studies now, trying to gain some of those types of insights, um, and you know, hopefully that'll result in some changes to products that result in more conservation and happier users. Um, I still think that's a big challenge. I don't know if you can do that, but hopefully we can gain some insights and uh, and use our creativity and and uh, come up with some solutions there. <coughs> 